Hello, Monsters of Anti, and welcome to Total War Warhammer 3 and a brand new supporter campaign as Krokgar. That's right, can't understand a word he's saying. He's not even like a Pokemon, can't even say his own name. Never mind. So this was the campaign as voted for by the supporters. Of course, the first episode will be out for everyone, and then I jack up the price. Kind of like drugs. Good. And don't take drugs, kids. And ask a responsible ad adult before you take. Obviously, take drugs you need. Take good. Take legal drugs, obviously. The other drugs, that's up to you. I, I'm not. I, I'm not watching you. I'm not going to be a gatekeeper. I'm not going to stop you. Right? I'm not going to be lurking around the corner ready to give you a stern talking to and an 80-page PowerPoint presentation. You do you, all right? Just don't do too much. Or any, in fact. Just don't do Just don't do anything. Just stop touching yourself as well. Anyway, good. Anyway, so this has been voted for by the... Just ignore that. We'll, we'll edit that in post. It's fine. Um, so this is Gambit's been voted for uh, by the supporters... And if you join the Hallowed Ranks supporters, then you can join either Patreon or YouTube. Both get the same benefits and you get early access to the campaigns. You get to vote in polls to push the campaign the way you want to. Obviously using democracy. So most people are unhappy, but some people are happy. And if that's not democracy, I don't know what is. And uh, there's also a nice members area on the Discord. We keep the riffraff out. Anyway, so uh, I know there was a few people asking for Krokgar for quite a while. He's not the most exciting lizard man, but to be honest, none of the lizard men factions are particularly great, apart from Nakai, because he gets crocodillos. Never mind. Anyway, so Krokgar, I do have a bunch of mods running, and uh, Krokgar does, of course, his, his trait is the last defender, so he gets upkeep reduction for his army. Nice ambush success chance. Nice. Unique experience game for Cyrus Warriors and Coburn Riders. Very nice. Faction-wise, minus 15% upkeep for armies led by Sara Oldbloods. Very nice. Cyrus buildings grant additional bonuses to Sara Scar veterans and Sara Oldbloods. That's interesting. Weapon strength plus 1% per character rank for Sara Scar. He's very Sarus orientated. He does like his, his big burly lizard boys. And who can blame him? And of course, more experience for the same. So what, build, what, what does a building do out of interest? Recruit rank faction-wide. Right, so you could just so so you can just recruit like a shit ton of very high ranking scar veterans and old bloods then. All right, well that's fine. Our army is uh, starts off pretty Cyrus heavy, but we do have some skinks. Then we also got a little friend, Ratok, who is going to immediately jump into this army. There we go, Ratok. Ratok, eh, what are you? You're cunning. Okay, well that's um, I mean that's fine. It's all right. And he is a Heavens caster, which is quite nice, because obviously we get Comet of Cassandora. It's, you know, it's no Law of Beasts, is it? Because we don't get the Amber Spear. But... It's just not as good. Because, of course, Amber Spear is the best spell in the game. They haven't really changed this very much, have they? I guess we'll get more melee attack for Sarus, since we're probably going to be recruiting a lot of Sarus. We have the, the Geomantic Web, which is a very weird mechanic which is very incredibly passive, weirdly late game, and almost forgettable, to be honest. And that is... The, oh no, they also get the Blessed Spawnings, don't they? You get, you get the Blessed Spawnings and, and you get the Geomantic Web. Those are your two mechanics. I mean, the Blessed Spawnings are nice. Anyway, so we're going to start off, because we start off with the Golden Tower over here. We're, of course, going to build the Golden Tower. Better than a Golden Shower arguably. And we're going to go for the Teotika here, which is almost certainly riddled with rats. Indeed it is, and are we going to have to fight as... Oh, I fucking hate this map so much. It's... Oh, it's the worst. It's so brown. It's so brown. It's only one colour! Okay. The first battle of a brand new campaign it, it, it's, it smells brown. It's just very, very brown. Look, I don't want to denigrate the person who worked or beat or the team that worked on this map, right? It is a lovely looking map. It looks very Skaven. 
The problem is, it's the only fucking Skaven settlement map. The minor settlements are just this without the fucking walls. Which is true of some other settlements. But the problem is, every Skaven settlement... If a Skaven take over a settlement, that's the settlement map, right? You fight the settlement, you fight the Skaven settlement. Which is not true for other factions. Other factions, you take the city, you fight their whatever city type it is on that city map. Skaven, it's always a Skaven map. And there's only one Skaven map. It's always this one. It's so fucking brown. It's just all brown. It's so dull. You know, it's great the first 10, 20 times. You're like, yeah, this looks great. It's very Skaven-y. Fantastic. And then you realise it's the only map you're going to fight on ever. Oh, well. Little uh, stay on rampaging through. There's some good damage. I mean, we're up against Skaven. This is not a particularly difficult fight. Although it's weird because, you know, normally they stick an army for you to kill. Kropkar apparently doesn't have an army to kill. He just goes straight for the settlement. But it is a bit weird. You start off with Tiatika, which is obviously... No, you start off with the golden thingy-majig. And then you... This is Tiatika. That's the one. Anyway, there's Krokgar. He's, he's literally got a power fist and a power spear. That's what he, he's... He's got old old one tech, is what he's got. Because, of course, the old ones were aliens, effectively. So they came to the Warhammer world, and they were like, yeah, we can terraform this. They started terraforming it, and uh, they cr they were really good geneticists, and they created the Lizardmen. Which is why the Lizardmen are such an advanced race, and live in advanced... Yeah, they've got spears and shit. I mean, they're, they're basically... I, it's, it's always something that really confuses me about the Lizardmen, is the fact that the old ones were seemingly super chill building with stone. And they do have, like, stone floating pyramids and shit. It's just a bit weird. I mean, I know we're building, like, concrete, but... It de they're just really big stone blocks. It's not... I guess we use stone blocks as well. It, it just doesn't seem very high-tech. You know, considering this, this race, the old ones created dimensional gates to to travel around through. Obviously, that didn't work out for the best, because that was uh, the polar warp gates. They created polar warp gates, and uh, some something went wrong. It went badly. They didn't follow procedure, did they? That's the problem. They, they, they probably they probably had, like, a faction of their of their civilization who, who thought that procedures for a warp gate was just Elf and safety gone mad, isn't it? You just have to use your common fucking sense. Yeah. Back in my day, we didn't need procedures. Elf and safety. Oh, we didn't need that. We used to run around in shorts, assuming the old ones had shorts, and scrape our knees out, out in the afternoon. Didn't come back until tea time. Walked uphill both ways in snow. Yeah, look what you did. You crashed the polar walk gates, you pricks. Anywho, uh, we've got the... We're getting a run. We've got the skin cohort up on the wall there. They are lobbing down javelins at the enemy. We've got more skin cohorts over here. I mean, the one thing I will say is that these I, I do like throwing javelins at people. And although these guys don't have many javelins, they do have some javelins, which is better than no javelins. So they do have very little range, only 96. And missile strength is 16, which is very low for javelins. But uh, we can still get some shots into the Skaven Slave Slingers here. Take a javelin to the dome. It's going to stink. Hopefully that will whittle down those Skaven Slave Slingers, because at the moment they are doing some damage to us. Not very much damage. This is mostly just a blob battle. We're just throwing ourselves at the Skaven, grinding our way through them. So Krupgar can shoot. Once, once he's got his like little power claw thingy, he can like shoot 
a light bolt out of it, being that it's it's basically a laser. That's 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 the idea. I think in the end times it was suggested that the old the old ones are in contact with the Eldar because the Skaven finds some communication device. And they say the 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 voice on the other side sounds like the voice of the horrible elf things. But then the end times was absolute bullshit, so probably best not to worry about it. You know, it feels at a certain point there was there was just a couple of writers sitting in a dingy office somewhere, fag in hand, going, um, oh fuck it, I don't know. How do we end this? Uh, I don't know. Fucking. Manfred does it. Yeah, I'll do. Yeah, fuck it, whatever. Right, pub? Pub. They got a monument there. That looks like a lizard man monument. That's weird. Okay, base missile damage plus 15%, leadership plus 10. Weird monuments. I, I, you know what? I don't, I don't mind the defensive build. I know, I know there's a few people that really hate the towers. I don't hate them. I think they're fine. I just wish they were a little bit more cohesive and, I don't know. I mean, for one, I think the the Warhammer sieges aren't very good anyway, right? I think they're pretty, they're pretty naff as sieges go. I think the maps are way too big. I think I've said this before. Maps are way too huge. You never... I mean, well, to be, to be fair, you sometimes do use the most of this map, mostly because the Skaven run away and you have to hunt them down through the city. Also, this map is an absolute fucking nightmare because it's got so many weird pathing bits all over the place. It's just... Oh, it's a fucking pain in the ass. However, for the, for the most part, sieges are way too big. The maps are just not really that they're just they're just too big I, I i would i like the sieges from warhammer 2 with the exception that i think the maps should be more interesting i like the bridges right that kind of stuff i love the death star trench very nice and i think if we could just if, if we could just have like that like if that was the city center there and we just had something like that. And that's like a nice, it's a nice little compact map. It's, it's not too big. Because most times in a siege, you know, you're only using one section of the, of the battle, aren't you? Of the city. We're not using that one. And you could do maybe flanking attacks and stuff. But then when you come under attack by the AI, the AI tends to spread its armies out. Which is kind of annoying to deal with, at least for me. Because I'm old and I can't micro very well anymore. And the problem is, I don't really want to... Because what I, I tend to do, I, I, I pause the battle, I'll run over here, right, what's going on over there, I'll do it in slow motion, then we'll go back over here and pause. That's what I, so what I do when I'm like laying siege or defending is I always try and defend one area, because at least that way I kind of can deal with what's going on. And that could just be me because I'm old, but still, it's, um, and also this, this, this city always takes ages to fight on. Okay, have we taken, right, we haven't beat them, but we have taken the minor supply location. So that's good. I have noticed they fixed this. When I was, um... God, what, what faction was I playing? Shit, was it the Changeling or something? Either way, um, I noticed that this, this minor supply location had reverted to the point where it controls like 50% of the towers on the map for some reason. So I flagged it, and now it doesn't. So I suspect they maybe fixed it. It's nice we're getting hot fixes. Don't get me wrong. I just feel like they probably should have done it before the backlash. Anyway, the point is that we successfully defeated the first army. It just took almost 10 minutes. Oh, that map sucks. I think it would be fine. If it wasn't literally every Skaven map. It's just... Just all of them. It's just all of them. Alright. We're gonna go... Wait. What's that? Physical resistance. Sacred spawning. Alright, well, I'm grabbing that, obviously. 
Obviously, we're going to go for that. And more lizard boys. Yes, absolutely. We're getting the golden tower because that's going to give us more money. We do have the skink foraging camp, which is more growth and casualty replenishment rate. Something good to start off with. Now, we have met... Where are they? Cla right. Right. We've got Clan Mordkin. Now, these guys have three settlements. Where are they? That's the question. And then we've got Clan Morbius. Who are obviously morbing their little hearts out. Now, they're not very strong. But we don't know where they are. So, victory conditions-wise, we need to kill Clan Mor... Oh, we know where they are. They're down there. Then Clan Mordkin. They're up there. Uh, the Silver Host. They're up there, but Khalidra will probably kill them. Leafcutter's Tribe. I mean, we could kill them, but again. And Manfred. I haven't... Manfred used to be my little foil, but now... Being, being where he is in the desert... I mean, the thing is, like, one of the main dangers for a vampire is obviously sun, isn't it? So, I feel like going to the desert, it's, it's like a goth going to the beach, isn't it? It's unlikely. Anyway, so, I mean, in fairness, you know, vampires did originate in Nekara, but still, that's not the point. The point is that he's just not noticeable anymore, so I don't have to worry about him. Okay. We are going to go with whatever's going to give us more growth. Like that one. Yeah. Gives us some more money as well, which is nice. The, uh, the main problem is... I definitely... Right, I think what we need to... In fact, I probably should have built defences here rather than the Golden Tower, but that will be useful. So we're going to get a Sara Soul Blood. Going to make it Supine. He's going to sit there, and he's going to recruit a Skink, which isn't great, but, you know, we're, we're going with what we got here. And then we're going to head straight for the Cursed Jungle, because the sooner we kill all of these guys, the better. Meanwhile... Supine is going to stay right here and just basically defend this little pass. Now, we do potentially have issues down... Are they? Are we at war with Clan More? Hang on. Uh, no, we're... No, we're... Oh, that's like... Well, that doesn't look like me. It's not. That's got a beard. Lizards don't have beards. So, we've got... We're only at war with Clan Mordkin at the moment. Now, Clan Morbius, they, they might... They might morb hard and decide to declare war on us. But for the moment, if we can take... The Cursed Jungle, Temple of Skulls, and the Serpent Coast, and then head south. Because we could be we could potentially make friends with Kalida. We could be Kalida friends. I'm tempted to say let's be Kalida friends. Oh, don't make me do this, please. Thank you. Cause. Hey, don't it. Oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a field battle. It's not that goddamn settlement battle. Well, in that case, you know what? I mean, I could auto-resolve it, but auto-resolve is always much nastier than it than it would be just to fight it. So we're going to fight it just to limit our casualties, make sure we're nice and fresh so we can, you know, really crush those fucking rats. Well, at least it's not brown. It's kind of green. So we've got our Colbon Spear Riders on the flank. There. I mean, I do think that riding Raptors is pretty fucking metal, isn't it? These guys are mostly anti-cavalry, for the most part. But still, you know, they still... How much charge bonus have you got, actually? Check. 32. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not great. It's not bad. Meanwhile, menace from below. Hitting the old skinks there. I'm sure they'll be able to fight that off. I'll send some assistance. Send some, some of their big brothers over. Yeah. Get out of there. The AI does not does not use its menace from below. Oh, look, creamy waterfall. 
That is so creamy. So creamy, so viscous, so disturbing. So we're attacking this game of Slave Spears. I mean, to be honest, in, in brutal honesty, this game of Slaves are never going to win engagement against Saurus, are they? It's just not going to happen. So these guys currently have... I mean, they've only got 24 melee attack, to be fair. But still, their 46 weapon strength and 43 melee defense suggests that... Um, it's going to be fairly one-sided. The Blessed Saurus, on the other hand, do have a melee attack of 37 and should be able to mop up the Skaven fairly easily. So far, so good. Well, the Cold One Riders have swept around behind the enemy and taken out those Skaven Slave Slingers for us. Thanks, boys. More menace from below being summoned in. I really want to take out those skin cohort. I think it's because they've got a missile attack or maybe they're considered to be a squishy target. I'm not entirely sure. I, th I think spawning Menace from Blow on Cyrus is probably a stupid idea. So we chase them down across this game and do get a bonus to their speed when they're running away. And uh, that can cause some issues. Because if you go and chase them down, you end up like all over the fucking battlefield. You have to be very careful to try and maintain your battle line. I just fucking like the Cyrus looks so good. Look at the armor. And in the trees, the Saras slowly whittled down. Oh, yeah, and also Kropgar, of course. As he jamifies a Skaven's face. Tell you what, these, these Skaven are actually holding on for much longer than I thought they would do. I am surprised. I think it's probably because they run away and then rally and so they don't care. I mean, still, still, still. We've killed, like, half their army. I mean, most of those will be Skaven slaves and therefore expendable, but still. Oh, there's Big Bertha. I think that's what I'm going to call my Stegiodon. Big Bertha. It's just a good name. She's large and in charge. And she's demanding to see the manager. Okay, well, I... I think that'll do it. There we go. I mean, we lost a few skinks, but they're small and squishy, so... No biggie there. All the cupped hands of the old ones. There we go. So we've got cupped hands. That's good for... Cu cupping, I guess. Who doesn't like to be cupped? Exactly. Okay, we'll get some more lads here, and then with any luck, with the garrison we... Oh, it's, I mean, it does have some... Does that give temple guards? Oh, it does. All right, in that case, that's... Yeah, definitely build that one first. Definitely build that one first. Let's go for route marcher so we can move that a little bit faster. And I'm going to get... Ooh, wind blast. Nothing like a blast of wind. Blows the cobwebs away, doesn't it? And more importantly, people. Well, rats. Okay, we're going to just push forward right away. I think we're going to go for the Temple of Skulls because there's obviously rats there. And uh, killing them sooner rather than later, definitely the better option. Yeah, Supine, you're just going to stay there. You just wait there for a second. Just need to go and squash some some rats. And then we need to make friends with Kalida. She may be a dusty mummy, but... Uh, uh, she won't immediately try to kill us? I'll say that, but Crop Guard definitely did try to immediately kill us. Oh, we could get a Blessed Stegid on. That's nice. Okay, good. I can pull you into combat. Oh, this is going to be another brown one, isn't it? 
Oh, Valiant Defeat. Really? Against that? Are you sure? Ah, uh, okay. Enemy reinforcements are arriving from the side of the map, but we're waiting for them. So the plan is, we will engage them in the front here, then we'll bring these units around from behind, trapping them and hopefully wiping out the army. What I didn't want to do is be waiting for them here, because likelihood is they just run right off the edge of the map. So we're trying to, like, trap them a little bit. Also, why does it like, like look like they're wearing little shirts? They kind of, like, got white white fur, but I'm assuming that's just the distance thing. Alright, never mind. It, do it does look like they're wearing little, little shirts, doesn't it? Quite adorable. Anyway, the Saros Spear is moving in from the front, and then we've got the blessed Saros Warriors coming in. Oh, there's just Saros Warriors. Coming in from the rear, backed up by Ratok. Obviously, if you have name, I'm, I'm going to be honest, just, just give me names for, like, monsters and and lords and stuff, because I'll never remember to rename units, and also, I almost never notice the name. I mean, I almost never remember to do the renames, but still, I do sometimes remember. Occasionally. Those are little wind blasts. Doing quite a bit of damage to those, uh, Escape and stage, which is great. So you move in. Try. We just need to try and kill off as many as possible. Although some of them will run away, the important thing is to to try and kill off most of them, because this army will escape the battle otherwise. Meanwhile, the rest of the enemy garrison, of course, waiting for us to turn around after we've killed all their friends. Okay, we're just mopping up the survivors. They do have a general there. We need to kill off him as well. He's going to be quite the problematic character. It's, it's, it's sometimes hard to kill enemy characters early on. They just don't seem to take very much damage. Anyway, with the initial enemy army defeated, we're now going to move on the gate, kick it in. I'm going to cut that part out because it takes quite a while. So Okay, we're flooding through the gate now. I mean, kicked it open. We are attacking across the bridge. This probably isn't the best place to attack, to be honest. I probably should have hit here, because then you can kind of spread out a little bit here. You've just got a massive choke point. If the Skaven had any sense, what they do is just, like, pile clan rats. I mean, the thing is, right, this battle is not going to be difficult. They've got clan rats. I've got Sarus. En end of calculation. I win. However, it is going to take a little while. So, as we spear these ratties, continue to flood into the city. I mean, they do have like 36 melee defense, which is quite a lot of melee defense in fairness. Skaven are retreating, including their general units. Probably should have wiped that out. We're still trying to get into the city. Got my problem. There's the enemy general. He's... <laughs> I was trying to kill him, but it was taking too long. And there's such a pack of units here that you couldn't actually... So basically, I'm just ignoring him now. Because he's not, he's not doing that much damage. And I feel like just getting my guys into the city is probably the better option. Meanwhile, we do have these Cold One Spear Riders. Now... We do have a little bit of intensity. It's not doing a huge amount. But what we need to do is I need to bring these guys around and then try and take out the gates, at which point we then have access 
to some more of the city. And I could potentially send the spears over to go and grab the victory location there. And uh, then we can obviously just take the city. That's like a hell of a fucking roller coaster. I mean, that does not look safe, does it? Where's the handrails? How many... I mean, I, don't, I know they don't probably care, but... How, how many minecarts do you think they lose? It must be shit tons. What the fuck are they thinking? So we've managed to break through. We're now in inside the city and we're just going to sort of head across the bridge. We're trying to send everyone across, but they keep like running into a retreating Skaven unit and stopping to have a snack, which is fine. But then carry on, please, because it's just it's really irritating to have to constantly remember to... You have to, you have to get, get, make sure your unit keeps moving, otherwise they just stop and don't do anything. They really do look like they're just wearing little shirts, like with a, with like a waistcoat over the top of it. It's like from Basil and the Great Fucking Mouse Detective. Okay, we managed to drive them back across the bridge there. And now we just need to follow them. God, I wish I had some more AoEs. Some nice AoE spells. Like a lot of Winds of Magic. Uh, to be honest, I wish I just had a stack of Laws of Change. It does make battles a little bit easier. To, to what I've been doing recently, and that's a bit of a... I've been playing a little bit of Napoleon Total War. I know blast from the past and uh, the battles there I genuinely think that they just feel that little bit more difficult because you don't have to you don't have those AoEs and shit it's kind of like Pharaoh to be honest except I really like gunpowder play I love I love the idea of some people in spiffy uniforms lining up just to take shots at each other it fucking boggles my mind that that was the best way to fight a battle Yes, we're going to line up, and we're going to take pot shots at each other at fairly close range. <laughs> Who the fuck thought that was a good idea? It's fucking insane. This is the problem when you have the fucking aristocracy deciding how they're going to do shit. All they care about is, is the battlefield looking nice and spiffy and everyone having nice uniforms. That's all they give a shit about. Anyway, the point is that um, you don't have those AoEs and stuff. Also, it makes defending coasts a lot easier because of course you can't just march your army into the sea you need to have a fleet and I never thought I'd say this but I think we should have fleets back because I think Total War Troy's biggest problem was the fact that you had to just end up defending your coastline from a fucking bajillion armies just sailing across. It makes it a lot easier for the AI, but the problem is, I think, in my opinion, it makes naval invasions too easy. It effectively turns naval invasions into an extension of the land. And I don't mind having the, the armies meeting and fighting on an island thing, right? That's fine. It's more about... There needs to it needs to be harder for naval invasions to occur. There needs to be some more thought about it. Cause God. And any campaign where you have a shit ton of coastline is is just an exercise in frustration in my opinion. I mean, on the other hand, the, the fleets in Empire are a lot of fun, right? Having lots of ships just shooting each other? Mwah, chef kiss. The, the, the ship battles in, in Rome, Attila... I mean, the, the ship battles in Shogun and Fall of the Samurai are pretty good. But certainly Rome 2 and Attila, ship battles were fucking awful, and... 
I don't care that there are there are a few people who seem to think that we just we need ship battles everywhere. Otherwise, it's it's somehow a regression of total war. They're taking mechanics away, and I'm like, no. The, the ship battles in Rome 2 and Attila were fucking shit. All right, they were fucking awful. There's no way in hell they should have brought them back. Now, I I do think the ship battles could have worked in Warhammer. However, I think I think the design document for Warhammer was already quite big. I think that probably would have been a step too far. I think they would have been spreading themselves too thin there. So I'll give them that. In Three Kingdoms, I don't think it matters, to be honest. A lot of people are going, wow, the most famous battle of all was a naval battle. It, it was, in a way, that both the sides had fleets, but not in the way that none of the ships actually engaged each other. Like, they were literally barges, and also, most of them just burned down due to a fire ship attack. That was the, that was the sneaky play. So, I don't think that really matters. I mean, I would have liked to have seen maybe some... You know how, like, in Dynasty Warriors? Yeah, Dynasty Warriors. And one of, the, one of the maps was, like, just ships, like, interlocked. So you just move from one ship to another on land. That kind of thing. I think that could have worked okay. Just something like that. Yes, it would have a little bit fantastical, but then, you know, it was a little bit. But, yeah, I don't... I don't miss ship battles in Rome 2 and Attila, but when we get Empire 2, we better have fucking ship battles. Otherwise, I'm going to lose my shit. Anyway, we're trying to we're trying to attack across the bridge. They keep throwing Skaven at us. Fortunately, that is depleting the number of Skaven they have available to them. Uh, they're down to about a third of what they had. We're going to move the Cobalt Spear Runners, go and take out that gate over there. I am trying to break through. I really hate this. The um the wind spell bounces off the cliff, which is, I'm assuming, because there's no ground there. It's some, it's some kind of weird programming witchcraft, the way that works. Meanwhile, the Skinks, Krokgar, uh, Big Bertha, and the unit of Sora Spears are mopping up the Skaven over here. I genuinely probably think we're going to get a break. Yeah, we, we've killed, like... I want to say we, we're, we're all... We're, we definitely kill the two-thirds of their army. Heading towards three quarters. So uh, I don't think they're going to hold on for much longer. At least I hope they don't, because I fucking hate this map. Okay, we're going to push across this bridge, splitting our forces a little bit, then we can get around behind them. I say they don't really have much stuff left. We're taking a little bit of damage from missile fire, but not very much, to be honest. We're weathering that fairly well. And the clan rats are going down. There's the enemy gen. I mean, I just need more. I'll tell you what, I need is dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are actually a nightmare to deal with because they just throw you all over the place. Skaven is just a pain, though. They all run away, and then you follow them, and they rally, and then you get surrounded by clan rats. I mean, that's how Skaven kind of kind of works. Skaven do work quite thematically. There is that. Got a good theme. But fortunately, army losses take effect, and I don't have to do this anymore. Oh, God, I hate that one so much. I don't think it's too much to ask to add more Skaven settlement maps, is it? Just give a little bit of variety would be nice. The problem is, every every single Skaven settlement is like that. So, if you have an incident where, like, the, a Skaven faction gets quite strong, that's, that's all you end up dealing with. Oh, Wattle Expeditionary Forces. Yes. Yes! A thousand times yes. Okay, we're going to get Inspiring Presence, because, uh... Well, he is, isn't he? I'd be inspired. Are you inspired? I'm very inspired. Okay, you can just stay there. We do have a Blessed Eggid on. Now, how much is the Blessed... I... I... 245 upkeep a turn. I can afford that. Let's get one of those bad boys. And then we've got the right, let's go, we've got the right of ferocity, which is more income post battle loot, unit experience per turn, recruit rank, local recruit, that's all good. We've got, do we have these two as well? 
We've got Primeval Glory, haven't we? We've un Okay, we've unlocked both of these. We just can't afford them because uh, it's quite expensive. Do we get... I thought only um, Teehee got the right of Sotek. All right. All right. All right. Okay, we'll upgrade you. Reptiles and serpents share ancestry. Maybe we have common cause. Maybe we do. Yes, Kalida. Thank you. Ah, oh, Kalida. Yes. Yes. Let's. Indeed. Let's join forces, Kalida. We can do this together. Big angry lizard boy, dusty mummy. It's a match made in heaven. Or at least on certain specialist websites on the internet. I'm now I I could be wrong here. I will hold my hands up. I could be wrong here, but I'm fairly sure you shouldn't be able to run away in ambush stance. I mean, your army's shit, mate. I mean, this army's pretty... The garrison's not great. Uh, do I recruit someone just to go and deal with that? Okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna leave it. They may attack. And if they do, I might be able to win. I just don't know if I can be bothered. It's one of those fights where it just seems like it's just going to be uh, kind of uh, kind of annoying. Just teeny tiny little fight. Kind of tedious. What do you want? Mate, you can get fucking wrecked. You just ran that way. Okay, perfect. That's good. Because we can just chase you to your last little hidey hole. Come here. Come here. I'm going to head for the Serpent Coasts. Oh, you're replenishing now. Okay, I mean, even with replenishment, I don't think you are any threat whatsoever. Let's get a tablet of spawning, because that's all we can get. We could do the Rite of Ferocity. It's only five turns, though, and I don't, I just don't think it's going to be that useful. Okay, please let me all resolve this so I don't have to... Thank you. Okay, that's one lot of rats dead. Boop, boop, boop. Excellent. Now we just need to kill the other rats. Master Riders. We don't really have many cold ones at the moment, so I'm not going to grab that. I am, however, going to grab... Hmm... Do I want... Do I want... I probably want both of those, don't I? I mean, the Saras are just generally good, right? They're, they're just... They're just pretty good. <sighs> okay, yeah, we will... We'll, we'll go with... Um, we'll do this. We're doing it. We're doing it. And I'm going to get Wind Blast. Let's buff that Wind Blast. Okay, we've got we've got one province. This is this is looking pretty good. Now we need to go south and take out these guys. We've still got the Golden Tower. The Golden Tower does have reasonable defenses. We've got a we've got a Soros Old Blood there as well. So that's fine. I mean we could recruit some more guys potentially. Let's get more growth. How is the happiness here? Okay, so provincial instability is minus five. We could do with a happy building there, if at all possible. We'll we'll work on that. That's probably the next thing. If we upgrade the Temple of Skulls, that's the next thing to build. I'm fairly sure that to our north, Kalida should be able to deal with the whatever the fuck those guys are. Leave her to deal with that. And hope that an army doesn't appear out of the fog of the war and comes to attack the Temple of Skulls. I'm, fa I'm fairly sure it'll be fine. 
I have faith. Recruit 30 units. I can, well, eventually do that. Okay, let's book it over there. Oh, you are not happy boys, are you? Well, what happy building can I build out of interest? Is it this one? The old one monument? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So, ideally we need to build up. Do, what about the dwarves here? The favor of Iron Peak. I'm listening. Now, they, they liked the bad things I did to the rats, which is great. They could declare war against the rack. I don't know where those go. I think they're up here, aren't they? I they usually die pretty quickly, so I'm gonna say sure. Let's do that. Let's get some good relations. Let's just let's make some friends here. That's what I'm thinking. You know, we're new to the area, we're single, and we're ready to mingle. Allegedly. I say new to the area, obviously Crocodile's been down here for a while, but Realistically, he should be with Mazda Mundi, and Mazda Mundi's kicked him out. It, it's, com it's, it's, it's complicated. No, oh, you're grievous. Good for you. General Kenobi. Uh, okay, these guys should be... Is there anything that makes people happier? There's one that makes control plus two. It's not really going to help us. I mean, we will get... So, it'll only be going down by minus two. Because provincial instability will drop minus one a turn. And then... I mean, they won't be happy, but they won't be really cranky. But what we need to do is we need to take out the Skaven down here. This should be our next objective. Who are these guys? Oh, that's the Order of the Lawmasters. I wonder if we can make friends with them as well. Hmm... I think it's about making friends and influencing people because um, we still think, right, we've, we've killed Clan Mordkin, tick. Silverhost should die on their own, fine. Clan Morbing to a south, we'll kill them next. Then we need to kill Manfred, though he does tend to just die of his own accord. And the Leafcutter's tribe, again, should die of their own accord. So that should give us the short victory achieved. Great. Then we need to kill well, those guys, again, we need to kill those for the short victory. The Exiles of Corn should be fine. Clan Maws, the Bloody Hands, Pockmar. I mean, we, there's a few, because we need to take the Dragon Isles over there, and we also need to uh, wipe out uh, Kairos. Now, obviously, Kairos has moved. He used to start off in the Southlands, and he then got chucked onto the South Pole. I think that was because Oxyotl was getting too big for his britches. Oxyotl sometimes does wipe him out, but sometimes they sort of battle backwards and forwards. It depends, but... Um, we can uh, we can work on that. We're working on it. Okay, in the meantime, what do we want? What do we want? I wouldn't say no to a Scar Veteran. Because the more of these we build, the more recruit rank we get. That is tempting. I think we're going to go with money, though. It's kind of boring, but I think getting a good economy is a good idea. I'm actually going to knock this down. We're going to get another growth building here, because I think the more growth we have, the better, because then we can upgrade this. We can upgrade this next turn, and then we can build the happy building. So it's not all bad. Just need to do some, some rejigging, don't we? Brutal business. That means that our Saras have got 89 weapon strength. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll fucking do it. Okay. Uh, we haven't met the Order of Lawmasters yet. Are these, um, we don't even have met Clan Mordkin yet. Oh, they've got a gold mine, haven't they? <gasps> Ooh. Now, they won't have any large. Well, they might, they might have rat ogres. They might have rat ogres. Let's not let's not rule that out. Okay, we're gonna build that. Medicinal herbs. It's strange that medicinal herbs doesn't doesn't make people happier. Oh well, never mind. Uh, more growth. Yeah, let's let's go with that. 
Let's go with that. And the sequence of skink spawning, because that's the only thing I can research. It wouldn't be my first choice, but there we are. That's that's just that's just that's just life for you. I'm actually gonna upgrade this first because then we can get the defenses here, and I feel like this this kind of being the only access anyone from the larger section of the continent has. And it kind of draws a penis there as well, which is quite fun. And um, no balls, though. Well, unless those are the balls, in which case... I really should go and see a doctor about that. Um, yeah, so we, we, if anyone decides to declare war on us, at least they're going to have to come through there. And so defense is there, probably a good idea. We've got Cleavis one north. That's fine. She'll protect us there. To our south, we can knock out Clan more mighty Morbin Power Rangers. And uh, then we can hopefully team up with that... Ponzi Elf Prick to the south. What's his name? Uh, Tekalis, that's the one. Okay, we've got the Rite of Awakening, although it should be said that, to be honest, getting the, the old bloods is probably way better for us. Yeah, I had a sneaking suspicion it might be. Okay, you are at war. Oh, we have met you. Me. The old I do. Abandoned us all. It is time you came to terms with it. Jesus, all right. All right, Christ. Chill out. Fuck me. They just went for some cigarettes. They'll be back. If I must. They'll be back. Anyway. Uh, good, so we're going to... Oh... You've got more fire throws. This is going to be a settlement battle. Please don't be a settlement battle. Anything but a settlement battle. Oh, thank God for that. Okay, we need to be careful of the war fire throws, but if we can lock them down, this battle should just be tank and spank. Emphasis on the spank. We do need to make sure we lock down those warp fire throwers, though. In goes Big Bertha. 44 kills! What the shit? Fortunately, just as I planned, the Big Berthas get the attention of the warp fire throwers, and then we manage to lock them down so they're not doing any warp fire on anyone. Lovely stuff. Meanwhile, we do have a couple of chieftains causing us some problems as they move in on Krokgar. And on our flank, the Red Crested Skinks, I've got four units of clan rats to deal with. While their unred crested brethren deal with the Skaven slaves down here, we've got also the Cobalt Spear Riders sort of rolling around. But they're 68 weapon strength now, because of course we've got that. Effect. Now, everyone does get that bonus, so everyone's got a load of weapon strength at the moment. But of course, you know, we have more to start off with. However, it does look like for some reason. I mean, tell you what, these chieftains actually have quite a lot of weapon strength, and they're basically not too bad. And Krokgar's getting getting his ass handed to him. Never mind, we'll, we'll probably be fine. Let's walk fire throw. We've even got a uh, poor little, poor little Ratok tanking, tanking the old walk fire throw, so making sure they can't shoot. Lots of Skaven currently on the run. The Skaven are superior in only one respect. They're better at dying. Yes, victory is already within our grasp. We actually managed to deal with those chieftains fairly well. On our flank, the Skinks are doing okay, having managed to break through some of the Units of Skaven there. The Colborn Spear Riders kind of getting a bit bogged down. We don't really want them getting bogged down because they will get um, will get wiped out. We're not too careful. The Red Crested Skinks, though, breaking through thanks to their frenzy. Even the Skinks with Javelins not doing too badly, despite the fact they keep getting Menace from Below being spawned on them. Krokgar took quite a lot of damage there, actually. Weirdly more than I would have expected. But we don't have any decent combat skills for him at the moment, though. And he was he was um, spit-roasted by a couple of chieftains, so... Unfortunate. The Warp throwers so how have done absolutely no damage. Well, that's not true. They've done 83 damage dealt as gold. Basically nothing. They have been 
poorly utilized by the enemy. And we need to go and kill that, kill that Grey Seer, knock him out. Okay, it's just kind of a mop-up operation at the moment with the Coldborn Spear Riders racing over, trying to trying to give this this chieftain the slip. Actually, he's only got a speed of fifty-four. These guys have got a speed of sixty-six, and in spite of that, he's managing to keep up with them for some reason. Never mind. We run down those Skaven. Going to run into the other unit as well. Red Crest's skink is taking quite a lot of damage there. You have 124 kills, which is pretty legit. But it looks like the Skaven are broken. You've morphed your last. I'll take it. Some lovely new real estate. And we might have, may have even killed their primary army. So if we move fast, we may be able to roll over them. That's the dream, anyway. Uh, let's go with more melee attack and armor for our Cyrus, making them even more dangerous. I mean, 51 melee attack, 42 melee defense, 89 weapon strength. Obviously, 20 of that is based on that event that's gone off. But still, they are just absolute monsters, those guys. That's why playing Scroll in Warhammer 2 was a fucking nightmare. Because the, you're basically fighting lizard men for fucking ages. Until you get weapon teams, you are really struggling. Because you can throw as many clan rats as you like at that Dasaurus. And they just eat them. Actually, you know what? I've changed my mind. I'm going to get. I'm going to go two for Curse of Midnight Wind because that does give us uh, that minus armor. And Cyrus don't. I mean, Cyrus do have armor piercing. They don't have a huge amount of armor piercing, comparatively. And they still have quite a lot of armor piercing, right? They've got more armor piercing than most armor piercing units. With that said, being able to debuff and uh, break heavy armored units for Cyrus to go and mush in melee combat probably quite important, so we'll go do that. Right, okay, so we have managed to squash one Skaven faction. We're going after the mighty Morbing Power Rats to the south now. The poll for next time is going to be... We kind of have two allies. Now, what I'm concerned about is that Thoric and Kalida may not necessarily get on. And they may decide to go to war if that is the case are we team Kalida or team Thoric I mean Kalida obviously is a dusty mummy so that's good Thoric's got more stuff so that's an option too plus of course if we get a military alliance with Thoric we get artillery and cannons and stuff and if we get a military alliance with Kalida we, we can only really get one of each of her units because there's a limit on them they are free upkeep but you only get a certain number of them, which is a bit of a shame. So, which are we going for? Thoric or Kalida? That is going to have to wait until next time. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.